Hello everybody, this is Michael Filesage checking in here today. I hope you guys are doing well. So today I wanted to talk about bacteria and how it can look in your spawn. In other words, I'm talking about how to tell if your spawn is clean or unclean. Well, at least these are some of the main indicators of identifying whether you have bacterial spawn. And of course, unclean spawn includes things like mold, right? Maybe your jar is beset by mold. Well, I don't include that because it's pretty obvious if it, if it is mold. Because A, usually it grows really fast if it's like cobweb mold, <laughs> or uh, it's gonna just basically be a really, really different color. You know, it doesn't look anything like mycelium. I'm sort of ignoring that for the purposes of this video and talking about a contamination that, that can be a lot more trickier to spot, namely sort of hidden contaminations, i.e. hidden bacteria. Uh, that's, but we'll get to that. We'll talk about the obvious forms of bacteria first. So I have a few examples of bacterial jars here. Now, if you guys take a cursory glance, maybe you guys can tell which ones are bacterial and which ones aren't. These guys are grass lovers, so they are truffle producing species. I'll save this for later though, because there's a point I want to make about bacteria uh, using those as, a, as an example. But first, let's go through the main sort of indicators of bacteria. So over here, we have a jar. Uh, I wanted to make this video earlier to show you guys early signs of bacteria, because this is obviously contaminated, but I think this will be a sort of a an extreme example. So you could use some of the things that you see in this jar and apply it to your jars to see if you have it. And the main thing that I wanted to illustrate with this jar is see how slimy things look, right? This is not because the grains were this wet. This is because it's bacterial. Some people call it wet rot. It shouldn't look like this, right? It should not look like this. It's very, very moist and it never dries out right? Because oftentimes, for example, when you get your grains out of the pressure cooker, there's going to be a lot of water, right? Or like condensation on the jars and your grains will look wet. That's totally normal because the grain hasn't reabsorbed the moisture. But if it ne if it just stays like this, this is a bad sign, uh, either because you put too much water or in this case, bacteria. And you can see there's actually sort of a film kind of going around it. There's a white, some white stuff around there. And it's, it's not just the moistness it looks like. It's it, like you could visibly like imagine if you touch it, it will be sort of sticky. You know, it's got sort of that look and you can see it's basically sort of disintegrating. Uh, it's nasty stuff. And uh, so this is, you know, like most of the jars now sort of like that, but before it wasn't. It would be like a patch here, a patch there, and that's more realistic for early signs of bacteria. So, uh, for example, let's say that you have a like a few wet grains. It usually starts little, and then when you shake it up, then here's another indicator: is that your your mycelium does not start recolonizing, or or they'll start recolonizing and they'll just avoid one particular area and they'll grow around it. That spot is bacterial. So. That's why shaking is important, not only for the fact that it speeds up colonization, but it also shows you if there's any contaminant there because when you shake it, it's gonna spread the mycelium, but if there was also a contaminant in a specific area, that's also all around now. So then the mycelium stops growing because the contaminant will colonize faster generally. So that's another purpose to shaking. And again, there's all sorts of bacteria and there's always bacteria, right? It's just the bad ones that we're worried about. We don't care about the good ones. You know, oftentimes when people have blotches on their fruits and stuff, that, that's usually bacterial blotches. And generally that's fine. You can eat them. It doesn't really affect fruiting too much. It's just mostly a visible thing to us. But, you know, certain types of bacteria will completely make it so that they don't fruit or hurt your yield or basically hurt the lifespan of your tub or your fruiting potential. So... That's example number one. I got another one here, as you can see. These are extreme. I wish I made this video earlier. Oh yeah, I wanted to show another example with this guy is that you could sort of see like dots, almost like dots growing. It was a lot more visible before because this thing really spread. But if, you, especially at the top, I think it's kind of hard to tell right now, unfortunately. But yeah, you see like that grain, there's like little dots on there. One, two, three. This jar had a lot of like dots on the grains and it was clearly different from regular, you know, uncolonized grains. So it was a little bit trickier. Now we can't really see it, unfortunately, but basically these guys are contaminated for real. And over here is another type of bacteria. And this is more so what I like to call embedded bacteria. This variety, I have been trying to fruit so many times. And every time I put it to bulk, 
it'll eventually it'll eventually get trichoderma or some kind of green mold. I don't even know if it's trichoderma, but it always ends up getting some kind of green mold. And I've tried it many times. And this is how it looks on the plate. On the plate, it looks fairly healthy, fairly uniform. But then every time I put it to grains, it grows like this. It's very thick, right? And they, these guys have been fully colonized for a while, uh, but extremely thick and they compress within each other, within themselves and super, super white, as you can see. And on the bottom, you can see how compressed they are a little bit because of how uh, you see the mycelium around, like the grains just really pushing it in. This is a telltale look of bacterial spawn. When in doubt, if your grains look like this and, and they're like rubber, right? They're not breaking apart at all. Super, super rough. This is a telltale sign of bacteria. This will be a real pain. If I actually really wanted to break this guy apart, it, it is going to be a pain in the butt. So this is a telltale sign of bacteria, super white mycelium, super thick, white. And oftentimes there's some metabolites. I believe that's a metabolite right there, you know, and uh, also blobs like this. You start to see like mycelium do weird things with bacterial spawn. So as you can see, it's very, very thick. It's almost like it's colonizing over itself and you got weird blob formations. Let me show you guys this other one here. Right there. And you see those metabolites right there in close proximity? This is generally a sign of contamination. It's normal to have metabolites, especially after full colonization. If they've been fully colonized for a while because it's trying to extract all the nutrients out of the substrate, but this is a little too much in one small area that raises some red flags. <laughs> I mean, like it also adding all the other factors, like look at that right there, sort of yellowing around the sides. It's super thick. It's like a window into the thickness. See some metabolites right next to it. You guys got the idea. And mycelium does weird things, you know, like these blobs almost sort of like form almost sclerotia like things. That's completely bacterial. So, in this state, they don't contaminate in the jar, right? They don't contaminate because, because they're consolidated, right? They're not all apart, so they're not in a weakened state. They're, they're, they are basically, you could think of this as one unit now. Now, what happens when you spawn it to bulk? You break it up, right? You break it up, and so all the mycelium pieces become like mycelium islands of their own. And they're sort of damaged because you just, you know, broke them apart. So they're trying to recover now. Now, that's when oftentimes you get contamination when they're weakened with bacterial spawn at least, right? Now, so oftentimes, I mean, not oftentimes, but depending on the type of bacteria and how intense it is and how bad it is, you can get a flush or two out of bacterial spawn if you spawn it to bulk, but it is a much riskier way than the way that I'm gonna show you. Recently, I've had a bad string of luck. These guys, they always contaminate. Now, they don't smell bad, right? That's another thing, smell. These guys don't smell bad. That's what makes it so, that, that's what makes it weird, you know, and they look fine here, but once you put it to green, they become like this um, and they don't smell at all. Whereas others, I bet you these guys will stink if I open it up. I'm not gonna open it up. I'm gonna pressure cook it a little bit and then dump it out. These guys will smell uh, wrong. So, you know, depends on the bacteria. There, it's not just a one size fits all thing. You know, there's all sorts of different bacteria out there. So these guys don't smell bad. So smell is not always just like a easy way to tell. Um, so anyways, we will get back to these guys in a bit. What I want to show you guys is another sign of bacterial spawn. These are Florida grass lovers. And so they form truffles, right? And these guys are all grain to grain from another jar, right? From what basically I took one grain jar and then I just like gave them all a little bit into three jars with some grains and then they colonize. It's a method to get more spawn quickly. So. Uh, basically, we see these two guys. These two guys are just full of truffles. Full of truffles. Fantastic, right? Here we have another one. Lots and lots of truffles. This is a really pretty good culture, I think. So I can't wait to see their fruiting performance, but that's besides the point. So now we go to the third one, right? Not nearly as much truffles. Not nearly as much truffles. But otherwise they seem pretty normal. They don't look weird. Mycelium doesn't look any different. It's just they don't have a lot of truffles and that raises red flags for me. Anytime you do 
a bunch of jars from the same, say, culture or the same, or grain to grain, as you guys saw, or from the same liquid culture, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, from the same inoculum, basically, right? And one of them is sort of the odd one out. That should raise some red flags for you. Uh, you should know that perhaps because I know with truffle producers, oftentimes when when bacteria spreads, then they basically stop producing truffles, or they they will really slow down and then eventually stop producing truffles. Whereas the healthy ones will keep producing truffles. So that to me is a sign that this may be, or this probably is bacterial. Now, how severe, I can't really say. I'll probably try spawning it anyways, but it's just something to be aware of. If you got three of them or a couple of them and one of them is different and they're all from the same inoculum, basically, then keep an eye on that one. So now you might be asking, all right, so Sage, how should I, so I, I suspect that I have bacterial spawn. What, how should I go about fruiting it? Can I get anything out of it? Probably yes. There's two primary ways that you could go about it. You could try spawning it to bulk and it's gonna have the drawbacks that I told you earlier is that basically they're already in a weakened state. So if you break it up, then chances are pretty high or fairly high, I should say, that they're not gonna succeed. They're gonna get contaminated, etc. cetera. Uh, so basically what I'm doing for these guys, because I have tried spawning to these guys to bulk numerous, numerous, numerous times, numerous times. You watch my videos, you'll see. And they always, always end up getting some weird green mold. So this time I am finally going for top fruiting because I am not uh, trying to go for yield with these guys. I'm just trying to get some, uh, some swabs, some genetics off of these guys so I could start from zero. And I could hopefully get some without some embedded bacteria. Embedded bacteria, by the way, is like when you have mycelium, but there's no like bacterial blobs, you know, because it can be very, very obvious on agar. Here, I'll find you guys an example. You know, this right here. This right here is clearly bacteria, right? This is bacteria. Very, very obvious. Um, whereas embedded bacteria is like, it's almost like the bat. I, I don't know the, the exact mechanism, but basically the mycelium itself is contaminated. No matter how many transfers I do, I'm on transfer seven with these guys. And no matter how many transfers I do, and no matter how many times I put them to grain, they always end up looking like this. And so in these situations, the best bet is to go back to spore and hopefully get some new germination and hopefully that one is not gonna have the same problem. This here right here is another example of embedded bacteria. And look at how the mycelium is growing. It's growing really, really uneven. It's growing splotchy, right? This is a classic sign of embedded bacteria. I would not put this to grain at all. If you look at it from the back, it's a bit more apparent how messed up it looks. But so considering all this, this is very, very deceptive for embedded bacteria because this practically looks healthy for the most part. So basically it's one of those things to watch out for. You can usually spot embedded bacteria in agar, right? But sometimes it's very, very deceptive and you won't know until you put it to grain. So anyways, that's what we have right now. So what should we do, right? Well, I only have culture. I don't have any more swabs of this variety. So I wanna just get some spores out of these guys so I can start over. So that's where top fruiting comes in handy because with top fruiting, the benefits of it is that you, you don't have to break up your block. You're basically gonna try to fruit them in a stronger state at the cost of yield. That's basically it, that's, that's your trade-off and perhaps speed, although that really depends as well. But for me, it's worth it because I just want to get some uh, spores off this so I could continue my experimentations with this variety. Now with top fruiting, uh, it's called top fruiting because basically you open the lid when you're ready to fruit and then uh, usually you get your fruits coming out. You could put a Ziploc bag on here usually or some, or you could put it in a greenhouse or, you know, you just put it in a shotgun fruiting chamber even. It doesn't really matter. Uh, or you could just leave it like this. Just un unscrew this a little bit, you know. I mean, it's, it's they're going to be sort of crying for FAE a little bit, but it doesn't really matter as long as you get spores in this case. So this is why it's called top fruiting. You fruit from the top of the jar. And you just do it by putting a little bit of core. As you can see, put a little layer of core. In the past, I've done it with like filling it up higher. Some of you guys may remember, but it just takes way too long to colonize like that. Weeks and weeks and weeks. And I don't have time for that. So I just want to give them just enough moisture to get a couple of fruits and take some swabs, basically. So that's what I'm going for. And it's looking pretty good. Now, moving to the second point, right? Bacterial mycelium can do weird stuff, guys, like this. This is weird. They make blobs, as you can see, right? They do all sorts of weird stuff with bacterial mycelium. Bacteria can, you know, 
express themselves in all sorts of weird ways, basically. And so I looked at this and these guys just popped up about three or four days ago now. And I was like, oh, this is definitely trichoderma. I mean, look at it closely, guys. If any of you guys have had trick before, this is very, very similar to trike. The way it grows, how white it is, how thick it is, all the little dots, how they like don't grow evenly. And you see all these little white dots coming out of the core. This raised absolute red flags for me, right? So I was really worried. So I quarantined it every time, anytime you're in doubt, just quarantine it. And I was almost cer certain that this was going to be a really nasty case of trike. But if it was trike, then it should have started turning green, you know, a few days ago already, right? But there's literally no green to be spotted. And I've looked, guys. So this, I believe, is just basically bacterial mycelium. And I'm glad that I didn't throw it out. So basically, if I saw this on a tub, I would immediately be like, oh, this is trichoderma. But in the context of this bacterial jar, comparing the color of this mycelium to the mycelium that's popping up, and the fact that it hasn't started to change color after all of these days, suggests to me that this is just basically mycelium. It doesn't smell weird or anything at all. It just smells like, like mushrooms. So yeah, that's uh, I guess basically that's the video for today, guys. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Give this comment, a, give, give this video a comment, a like, a thumbs up, hit the notification bell and subscribe to my channel if you guys would like to support me. I do have a Patreon uh, and any of your help is absolutely appreciated and affiliates in the description. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Michael File Sage, checking out.